Amen. 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 You're more than enough. Mary said, I don't have a mind. He said, we're more than enough to fill that gap for you. You don't need that. Leave that. The Holy Ghost, the power of the highest, when it settles on you, it's more than enough. Forget the man. That's what Mary said. Fruitful vines, mother of thousands and of ten thousand. If you're the one, you say amen. If I'm talking to you, you say amen. 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 Fruitful ever amen. at the sides of your table. Amen. The one that sees our children's children. Amen. Virtuous, amen. prosperous, amen. fruitful. Amen. Again, a mother of thousands, amen. of ten thousands, amen. mother of nations. Amen. Mother of kingdoms, mother of entities. If you are the one, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It says there shall be a performance of that which God has spoken. Amen. And I tell you, these are not the days when such visions are prolonged, but the days of the performance are at hand. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This month you will laugh. Amen. This month you will dance. Amen. This month you will rejoice. Amen. This month you will glorify God. Amen. This month it shall be seen that the glory of God sits upon you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This month you will laugh. Amen. This month you will dance. Amen. This month people will laugh with you. Amen. None will laugh at you. People will dance with you. They will hear how God has shown you mercy. They will gather together unto you. They will celebrate God in you. Your life will glorify God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Bible says, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had spoken and did unto Sarah as he had proposed. If you're that person, say amen. amen. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. It will be well with you. It will be well with all that concerns you. Amen. Our brother said peace. You know, the world is looking for peace. But Jesus said, as they say peace, peace, what happens to them? Sudden destruction. But for you, peace of God that transcends human understanding. It says in Psalm 132, so it says peace within your walls. And then what? Prosperity in your palace. In your walls I speak peace. In your mortal body I speak peace. In your tissues I speak peace. In your womb I speak peace. In your organs I speak peace. In your bone marrow, I speak peace. In your blood vessels, I speak peace. In the systems of your body, I speak peace. In your soul, I speak peace. Peace upon you in your home. Peace in your finances. Peace in your work with God. Peace in every area of your lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said, and God will grant you peace. How? By all means. How? When? Always, there will be no time you will be troubled in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And I pray God will satisfy you all with long life. Amen. Listen, I'm not going to mourn here. Why? He gave me beauty for ashes. What did he give you? And what? Garment of praise. Okay, I'm going to say for myself, you can say for yourself. He gave me beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. And a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So I'm not going to mourn. Rather, I will rejoice. I will glorify God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
I don't want us to forget Nigeria. I still believe Pa Elton's prophecy. I say at one time Nigeria will be known so much for corruption. And honestly, Nigeria has been known so much for what? Corruption. He said afterwards, Nigeria will be known for righteousness. In Isaiah 45 from verse 8, he says, Open up ye heavens and rain righteousness. Not water now. Rain righteousness upon the earth. And I prophesy to Nigeria and I ask the heavens to open. And let righteousness be poured upon Nigeria in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Numbers 14, 21, he says, The earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. So Nigeria shall be filled with the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea in the name of Jesus. But that's not enough. That still can produce righteousness. Israel at one time was filled with the glory of the Lord. Signs and wonders. And they still ask for a calf. The gods that brought them. Why? Because now we go to Habakkuk 2.14. He says, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory. Numbers 14 says the glory. Habakkuk says the knowledge of the glory. When the knowledge of the glory comes, you will know no calf brought you out of Egypt. When the glory comes, you say, wow. When the knowledge comes, you know how. Nigeria will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ as the waters cover the sea in the mighty name of Jesus. I charge you all to turn northward, the place of promotion. The Bible says promotion does not come from the south, the east, or where it comes from the north. I charge your spirit to turn northward and advance towards promotion, advance towards Zion, advance towards fulfillment, advance towards abundance, advance towards manifestation in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen and amen. And of course, any horn, anywhere, those are authorities, entities. Those are like mountains. Actually, those mountains, like our brother shared, some of them are entities. You know, I found out that there was a time I was sharing, was our sister I was sharing with, and she said, sometimes I don't know how to correlate faith. You know, they went to Jesus, and he said, I can't give the children's bread to dogs said, you know, Pastor, if you had come to say, oh, you're a dog, then I'll know what to tell you that, okay, give me the crumbs. He said, but I can't relate it. So how do I contend? And I found out that all those things are institutions. That mountain is an institution. It can be a person. It can be an institution. So it's not really a physical mountain. But they're using a physical mountain to explain how seated, how established they are. They're using that mountain to tell you that these demonic entities have been before your great, 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 great grandfather. Not only have they been, they have rooted beams. They have archives of generals that they have nailed to the cross, that they have conquered, and they have copies of their picture in their sitting room. So when they bring in their guests, say, do you know this man? I conquered this one, and I conquered that one. They are so established that their head, like Nebuchadnezzar, enters into the heavens. And their feet is entrenched, a feet in the sea, a feet on earth. But the Bible says, as big as you are. It says, you shall what? Become a plane. So any horn. Those are authorities. When I say horn, it's a mountain. When I say horn, it could be a person. Say, so, oh, you don't know me. <laughs> you don't know me. Even men of God, you are just a, you are just a Christian. Men who preach, we know what we did to them. You this small boy. <laughs> you, that's how they talk. Praise God. You know, they talk to Amen. But today, they are afraid. They are destroyed. They are made plain in the mighty name of Jesus. In Psalm 125, it says, the rod of the wicked will not rest on the portion of the righteous. Any rod, any authority of the wicked, it will not rest on your Lord. It will not rest on your health. Amen. It will not rest on your finances. 
It will not rest on your home. It will not rest in your family. It will not rest on anything that concerns you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Deuteronomy 28, 7, it says, if they come against you one way, what will happen? They will flee before you. How many ways? Seven ways. Isaiah 54. Say, any weapon they have formed, they are still forming it because they blow. He says, I made the blacksmith that blows that metal thing in the fire. So sometimes that weapon is still in the fire. They are finding it. It's for you. Even in that fire, it will not prosper. They are finished it. It will not prosper. They are still conceiving it. It will not prosper. As long as I say against you, it will never prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus. Romans 16, 20. He said, God Almighty blew Satan under your feet. You know, he says, I'll make them of the synagogue of Satan. You know, when they say that Satan and the synagogue of Satan, you know what they said they did? Who say? Sometimes it's a gossip. Sometimes they just say things to run. He said, I will make them come and eat their words and bow at your feet. That's what's going to happen to you. Every head of Satan will be bruised under your feet in the name of Jesus. And when they are bruised, you will tread upon the lion. You will tread upon the adder. You will tread upon the dragon. And nothing shall by any means hurt you in the mighty name of Jesus. 83, God has not planted in your life that is bringing fruits of offenses that is not pleasant to your soul or to your body. It is removed this very moment in the mighty name of Jesus. Every messenger that has been assigned emissaries of the kingdom of darkness that has been assigned against you, their mission has changed. They are bound in the name of Jesus. Now they return to sender and they are banished never to return to you. Rather, you receive emissaries from God, emissaries of good tidings in the mighty name of Jesus. Every enchantment, every divination, every utterance that has been uttered against you, that does not go for your peace, is hereby nailed to the cross of Calvary. And I take of the blood of Jesus from the seat of mercy, from the holy place, as a priest unto God, and I blot all such utterances, working against you, I blot it out, never to stand, both in this life and in the world to come. In the name of Jesus, every desire of the wicked concerning you, I command it to perish. Every ungodly counsel against you, I command it to be scattered. I ask God to contend with them that contend you and visit with tribulation them that trouble you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. I said there's going to be a performance. You know, I told you, you can't go to those jihadists and say, excuse me, I want to preach. You know, according to Romans. <laughs> they ask you which Roman Empire. They ask Jesus, are you the one? Or do you wait? Do we wait for another? Jesus said, take to John this certificate and quote this scripture to him as it's written in Isaiah that I am, that's not what he said. He said, go tell John what you hear and what you see. The deaf hear, the dumb speak. The blind see, the dead are raised back to life. Then decide whether I'm the one or not. Where the days of his power. Not much talk again. No. Not much talk. It's proofs, right? It's proofs. And God will use you as that witness to prove that he's still on the throne. And he has never traveled once. In fact, he has never slumbered once. Amen? Amen. And amen. All right, um, I'll be exhorting briefly. Should be done soon. Mm -hmm. I'm awaiting more testimonies. Don't worry. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Even believers now, like um, Esther was sharing with me, 
So it's not that we've not heard it before. <laughs> They've heard almost everything. And if you're not careful, if you even preach, it's an Elijah told the Shunammite one, they say, Pastor, sorry, it's Elisha, not Elijah. So I meant Elisha, thank you. <laughs> what they cannot do is to, they cannot raise the dead, right? Uh, they can't say, Pastor, no. So the difference is the proof, right? Okay. Actually, even some floor members can even have better grasp of the scripture than the one that is sent. But in John chapter 4, he said, how do we, he said, Lord, show us the works of God. He said, believe in the one whom he has sent. This is the works of God. These are the works of God. It's the proof. When Elijah got to Mount Carmel, he didn't talk long. While he was talking, they were just looking at him like this. See the story. Fill up the trench. Mm. Hey, hey, hey. Then he told Professor Bar, oh yeah, command lightning. Call, maybe your God is sleeping. You know, your God drinks. <laughs> He shouts in the morning. He might be drunk by now. Sleep. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Make it louder. Use trumpets. Say, Lord, find a way to wake him. He's telling there's trouble. They were just looking. When fire descended, oh, Lord, we'll see ya. preaching ended. He said, The Lord, the God, is God. When King Belshazzar came and Nebuchadnezzar and they threw them into the fire, he said, Daniel, your God is what? God, now when Daniel was quoting from um, Exodus, chapter, actually they say chapter 43, it's not there, they missed it, I want to quote it for you, they will listen, but if there's no proof, I pray, you know, the king of those days, if you don't have proof, you can't even go before them, because they'll just hang the man, they'll just hang him straight, it's not now, that you can go on the podium and dance and dance and dance things out, they'll just hang him. So, we say Luke 18, I read from verse 1. He spoke a parable again unto them and said, Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Said, There was in a city a judge with fear not God, but we have to preach all the same. All right. But we'll preach with proofs. You get it? Mm, we preach with proofs. Because if we only have proofs and we don't preach, so they, they don't end up like children of Israel, who when they um, cross the Red Sea, they sang, they said, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and rider thrown into the sea. The Lord, my God, my strength, my shield, has now become my victory. The Lord is God, and I will praise him. I will worship him. I will exalt him. The same thing they did to Jesus. He was walking. They put their clothes. That's proof, that's proof without um, gospel, without preaching. You know. they, put, they say, Hosanna to the son of David. Then less than two weeks after they sang that song, they made golden cards. They said, these are the gods that brought us out of you. Seven days after they praised Jesus, they said, away with this man. Away with this babbler. One Barnabas the murderer. That's what proof without the gospel does. And then if you preach without proof, people will grow weary and tired. So like Elijah, when he started, they just be looking at you like this. Elijah said, choose, is God God? Or is Ba, Ba? Do you know nobody said God is God? Read it, First, first, first uh, Kings 17. Elijah said, for how long will you choose and oscillate between two opinions? If God is God, choose him. If Baal is Baal, do you know the whole nation was quiet? They were watching him. When Jesus said to his disciples, when 70 abandoned him, he said, would you go to, Peter said, to where shall we go? You are the Christ and you have the word of life. They responded. Because why? They're hearing the word and they're seeing proofs. They responded. Well, when Elijah said, is God, God, is God, until fire came, they said, the Lord, our God, is God. Ah, ah. So we have to do the two, right? Amen? So in Luke 18, it says, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Should I use my phone? Because someone said, if I don't carry a live Bible, that they won't listen to my message again. <laughs> I must carry Bible. It's not the same. Actually, whether you carry Bible or you use your phone, you are dealing with letters. The understanding in your soul is the spirit. 
and it's the spirit that quickens, the letter killeth. So whether I carry Bible or phone, what it is in my hand is an instrument of death. The understanding by the Holy Spirit of what I'm reading that is coming from my spirit is the life. But she said, if I see you with phone, even if I'm online, and I see you and I don't see you by pastor, I will shut down. And if I'm in your church and you don't carry it, but you used to have walk out, I say, ooh. So I was thinking, let me balance it. But I don't have the old King James Bible. I have one big one. Maybe I'll be bringing it. We'll put a table here. Somebody will be, we'll have a scribe. Somebody will be reading that one. It's one day. Very good. And they will be the one that will be our scribe. They will be reading it. Big Bible like this, you know. <laughs> Amen. And so we'll put that Bible under their pillow to sleep, right? Ah, Satan loves to show up in such places. My goodness. He's the master of the letter. Don't see how he's quoting the Bible for Jesus. He's the master of the letter. So there was, a, there was a city, a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. There was a widow in that city. She came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. It will not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. The Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be along with them? I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. So like we said, this is the kind of faith the Lord is looking for, that is coming on the earth. And at his coming, which is the last days, this is the kind of faith that is prevalent now, that the Lord expects. This is the triumphant faith, the victorious faith, the walking faith now. All right? When Jesus, before Jesus came, for you to have faith in salvation, you have to believe in John the Baptist and his baptism. And then they dip you in water, and then you are saved. As soon as Jesus came, that was put aside. The faith that worked for salvation, you believe Jesus is the only begotten son of the most high God. As he left, the disciples, they asked Peter, what shall we do to be saved? They said, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. And once you do that, you got saved. When Paul came, he changed and modernized it again. He said, what shall we do to be saved? He said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as a son of God and you shall be saved. So at one time, it flips. It changes. That's the operation of God changes with time and dispensation. The Lord said, at the, as at the time I'm coming, this is the kind of faith I'm looking out for. He's coming for the overcomers. So the overcomers will be operating this kind of faith that the unjust, that the widow operated. And you know how long it took her to get justice. Not at the first attempt, not at the second, not at the third. Probably God knows, maybe the 10th, 12th, 20th. But she never gave up. She kept attempting, she kept attempting, she kept attempting, and she never gave up. So here we can say faith is not much of the result, but much of the resolve. Let me repeat. Let me repeat. Faith is not much of the last days. It's not much of the result as the resolve. The resolve is, I'm not backing down, even if it's failing. They call it faith. That you back down and it works. It's not faith. So, in the last days, this is the kind of faith the Lord is looking out for. And I remember I told some people in Mark 5 that even Jesus experienced something like this in his ministry. In Mark 5, he met a man called the Gadarene, the man that was possessed by demons, over 6,000 demons. And when the man saw him, he said to the man, I, I, I guess we have to go there. Mark 5. I'll read from verse 1. And they came over to the other side of the sea in the country of the Gadarenes. When he was come out of the ship, immediately that met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among tombs and no man could bind him nor 
No, no, not with chains. Because he had been often bound with fetters or chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and the tombs, crying, cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High? I command. The word adjure is a military terminology. I command you by God, your Father, don't torment me. For he said to him, meaning, when the man approached Jesus to worship him, Jesus said this first. Meaning, number six, sorry, number eight happened before number seven. That's what it means. This English. Hello? Are we together? You know, in the book of Jabez, you could see number four. Sorry, number five happened before number four. He said Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. But the verse before it says, Jabez called on God. If you're more honorable than your brethren, why are you calling on God to save you? Meaning, they wrote number verse five. Sorry, verse five happened before verse four. Here, for he said to him, come out of the man you on Christmas. So what happened when the gathering charged at Jesus? Jesus said, you unclean spirit, come out of this man. Hmm. Then the unclean spirit responded to Jesus. I, unclean spirit, command you, Jesus, in the name of your living God, of your father, don't disturb my life. <laughs> That's what happened. You know, I know you want me to say it like Jesus, and everything just went smooth. And Jesus said, come out of me, you ugly man, shook and shook, shook, and the spirit came out, and Jesus walked on top, and all the spirits bowed down. I didn't feel like it, but that's not what happened. Everything went worse. At the first command, when you tell a spirit to come out, and it throws the man down, and he's struggling to come out, at least you've made an impact. I mean, you have attained a bit. But when you tell a spirit to come out, and the spirit now gives you his own command, Say, I now, maybe his name is a monkey arisco. <laughs> I want, no, not me, God forbid. <laughs> maybe I should use me one for that example. <laughs> I shouldn't use it. Abu, are you a fan? So, eh? <laughs> Say, monkey arisco, I command you, Jesus, in the name of your living, of the living God, your own father. Adonai, owner of heaven and earth. In that name, I command you to don't disturb my life. Kai. That's not the response you want to hear when you give you a command to a demon. That means the situation went worse. And Jesus said, in the last days, when you pray, and you go to God, because that look a look at it. It's a prayer. I said, shall not thank God answer his own elect. That means you can go to God in prayers. And God answers you and said, I have heard it is given, and the situation will go worse. Yet you are in faith. Then Jesus asked for his name, <laughs> and then they cast him out. And like Mua said, he said, "Please don't send us out of this environment." Kai, may demons not be comfortable in your environment. In the name of Jesus. If you go further in that Mark five. I'll read from verse 20. Sorry, let me read from verse 21. When Jesus was passed over again by sheep, people ask me, what is faith? How do I know I'm in faith? I'm not in faith. He passed over again by sheep to the other side. Much people gathered to him was near unto the sea. Behold, there come one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. When he saw him, he fell at his feet. He besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lied at the point of death. I pray thee. So this is the procedure of faith. Take note of this. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed and she shall live. I've said one thing. God 
has a language. Faith has a language. And God has a mannerism by which he attends to people. And when you talk to God, I remember I was talking to a lady. She said, Pastor okay, I told God, the way this thing is going, it will not be good for anybody. I said, actually, you entered God's, room with a, God's throne room with a threat. You're actually threatening him. So what do you intend to do? Dethrone him or what? He says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. It's courts with praise. Now, they didn't talk about the holy place. If you enter the outer court, the outer gate with praise and the inner with thanksgiving, then what are you going to tell him when you get there? Threats? And that's why I love the sons of Zedebek. Grant that these my two sons sit when you come to God and you have your request. Don't talk long. Establish three things. What you want. The point of reference of your contact of faith. Let me repeat. Establish. When he came to Jesus, you know, in Luke 11, he said, Lord, teach us to pray. So faith, uh, prayer is more technical. It's technical. If you like, if you are singing, worship, all the cloud in heaven fall down. And you don't have the technical ability to pray. Nothing will be answered. Nothing will work. That person will be in the cloud and die of cancer. Do you hear me? If you have the technical know-how, there may be no cloud. You walk in divine hell. You walk it. And that's God. He has parameters, processes for everything. Give all the poor. Sell your house. Give them food. Help them in the hospital. Deny the sonship of Jesus. You go to hell when you die. There's no book come about it. There's nothing you can do about it. All that is not going to work. Do you get it? Approach God, and there's no faith in it. All what you are saying, they will enter. He said, let that man think. He will receive anything from God. He will not answer that man. He will like, enter with realtics. He's not a realtical God. Say, my God and Father, Adonai, owner of heaven and earth. He knows he's Adonai. Perhaps if we deny him, we cannot deny him. So if you like, don't say it. He knows who he is. You're saying it is not going to make him that. He said, if you deny him, he will not deny himself. Adonai, he said, I know I'm Adonai. <laughs> you remember that man with the talent said, I know you are not step. I said, I know I'm not I'm not arguing with you. But then, if you know I'm not step, why did you do this knowing I'm not step, man? Right? They should have done this. This common sense. If I'm not step, man, they should have done this for that. Deal ruthlessly with him. Kai. So, you must understand. How he thinks. If you have no issue and you approach his throne room, you know why you're approaching, you can even be, hey, hey boys, I, I'm coming. Let, let me see Baba, Baba God, Baba Mike, Twali, Father. He knows there's no problem. He will, he will attend to you, okay? Hey, boys, kill on Shele. Say, Baba, we need uh, to find. Hey, how do you want to find? He will gist with you. If you enter, he said, enter his throne room with boldness. To obtain mercy at the hour of need. You know there's an hour of need. So if you come without boldness, my Lord, my God, all this twilight, say little twilight. We know there's fire on the mountain. What do you want? You get it. Be honest with him and follow his rules. In approaching Jesus, he made his, he didn't come with complaints. <coughs> he came with a request. So he told the Lord what he wanted. Number two, he established the point of reference of his faith. To let you understand, Lord, uh, that's why you saw that man in Mark um, 17 when he brought his child to the disciple and they couldn't he heal him. And he said, Lord, help me. He said, Lord said, all things are possible. He can be. He said, Lord, I believe. There was no point of reference for his faith to be established. He said, Lord, come and lay your hands. The centurion established his own. Don't bother to come. Just speak where you are. Why will I speak? I'm a man of authority like you. But mine is physical, yours is spiritual. When I give soldiers command, they don't question me, they obey. Command in the spirit. That sickness will answer to Jesus. said, I have not found such faith like this. So you must establish your reference point of faith when you approach God. That's why you see a man like Moses, as intimate as he was, and as all the miracles he saw, when God said he would not enter the promised land, 
He couldn't negotiate with God to enter. But David, when God said three days of person, he negotiated that evening. And the things ended the first day. He knew what to tell God. Once you know what to tell God, when they asked Solomon, what do you want? Bible says the answer he gave pleased the Lord. You know that people, the answer they give does not please the Lord. God will give you the wisdom and the knowledge. So he said, come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, meaning he accepted his request, right? Yes, sir. That means he agreed. Like 1 John chapter 5, is this verse 14 or so? He said, this is the confidence we have if we ask anything according to his will. He heareth us, and once he heareth us, we have the petition granted. So the petition was granted. See what happened. Jesus went with him. See what started going on. Much people followed him and thronged him. Now, it's not following now. When they're thronging, they're trying to touch you, meaning they slowed him down. After the Lord said, your request is granted, the healing got started getting slower instead of getting faster. After the Lord said, your request is granted, the proposal that was moving from desk to desk per day now stayed on one desk for another one week. It's no longer moving. Because he's now slowed by the thronging of the people. Yet the Lord is with him. You are in faith. And after discussing with God and God granting the request, things now slowed beyond normal. Does that look like God is with you? No. But you are in faith. That's why I said it's more of resolve than results. Are you following? I said I was going to exhort. I wasn't going to teach. It looks like I'm teaching. Right? I'm not teaching. I'm teaching. All right. So the first thing that happened is that the procedure became slower than normal. Yet Jesus is with him. You can say you have peace now. You are full of joy. But the thing that was working faster, that is to give you the result you are looking for, has now suddenly gone slower after you discuss with God. And the Bible says you are in faith. What's the next thing that happened? In verse 25, a certain woman had an issue of blood and has suffered many things. He's still following Jairus, who? Hello? Him and Jairus, they are going to attend to his daughter. This is God. Then people started, hey, Jesus, oh, Jesus. So his pace has reduced. Because it was only two of them. They've been moving, pram, pram, pram. Now his pace has reduced. Ah, Lord, after coming to you, the thing has slowed down now. You are still in faith. Now, let's look at the next stage of what happened. This woman... <coughs> <clears throat> Thank you. Had an issue of blood 12 years, suffered many things of many physicians, spent all that she had, was nothing bettered, rather grew worse. She heard of Jesus, came behind the press, touched his garment, for she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Straight away, <laughs> Jairus is still there, they're going, no. Straight away, the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Jesus, immediately knowing himself, the virtue has gone out, turn! He's no more going. He has stopped. So the process has now granted to a halt. <laughs> Does that look like we're in faith? No, it doesn't look like. It doesn't look like. Now he was going slowly before. If his health, the healing that was healing fast. After we prayed and the anointing came and we had peace. I even saw a glimpse of angels singing. The healing process now slowed. Ah. Then suddenly stopped. That's what happened. He stopped. He stopped moving towards Jairus' house. And he's with Jairus. And you have peace. And you have an anointing and assurance from the divine that the Lord is with you in what you discuss with the Lord. Yet, everything has grounded to a halt. That's what happened here. <laughs> it was just grounded to a halt. It would have been good. Let's see what happens. Let's go on. 
Then he said, who touched my clothes? And so Jesus said, oh, let the person come on. And you know, he's not ready to go until he finds the person that I don't know how long he stood calling on who touched his clothes. Uh, it's possible, Jairus will suggest, Lord, uh, it's possible even the person that touched your clothes has gone, has, has moved on. Can we continue, right? He's not concerned about who touched Jesus' clothes. He's concerned about his daughter. Right? But Jesus has stopped. The procedure has grounded to a halt. And Jesus seems to be more particular about who touched his clothes than Jairus' daughter. And Jairus doesn't seem to be happy with what's going on. If it's you, will you be happy? Okay. Who touched Jesus' clothes? Oh, say, Lord, nobody has come out. Who are you? Lord, let's keep going. These people, that's how they behave. Oh. I know them very well. And Lord said, who touched my, oh, God. Finally, she came out. Now, let's look at what she did. If she just told the Lord briefly, it would have been good. Bible says in verse... <coughs> and, but, but, but the woman fell in trembling, know what was done in her, came and fell down before him, told him all! Oh, oh, no! Do you know how she started? Lord, it started um, 15 years ago. Oh, God! Jairus said, from the way this thing is going on, something is going to go wrong. But why is the Lord behaving this way? This woman has touched his clothes. She's healed. Let's move on. Jama Jaka continue. The daughter, the daughter, the state I left her, it wasn't too good. And the woman now starts. Actually, Lord, there was one man called Jakuda. Ah, he's a bad boy. He took, I sold three plots of land. And he told me, he gave me halves. I took it. I wasn't cured. Then I now met, because he told the Lord all, not some, all, all. from where she spent and suffered from many physicians. Lord Jesus, I don't mean to be nasty. That man, that doctor that is inviting you, he's one of those that took my money. That man is a, but I don't want to call him a foster because I'm celebrating my healing. He's the last before I met you. That one that said that, uh, that has been saying that he wants to see you. That he calls himself physician. Let me tell you, Lord, he took a yeah, camel, don't I be? And then you know, she now talked about how she came behind the press. How she, oh God, look at the time. All Jairus is doing like this. Oh no, oh no, oh. And I promised I'll be back in an hour. Oh God, this is four hours. What is this? Lord, why are you doing this to me? Why are you like, why are you doing this to me? It's not fair. But you are in faith. You just don't know. You are in faith. The Lord is still with you. Of course. While he yet speak. Oh God. That came from the ruler of the synagogue's house. Certain which said, that daughter is dead. Don't trouble the master any further. I thank God that the Lord didn't let him speak. Because every circumstance you meet that denies you victory what you react to it determines whether you are in faith or not. Not what is denying you a victory. No. Not what you see. No. Not the situation. No. Not it getting worse. No. Your reaction, your words, your acts is the last day faith the Lord is looking out for. And the Lord spoke immediately. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Meaning, we're on course. Though the girl is now dead. We're on course. That's what it means. So the fact that you said it got worse doesn't mean you are out of faith. It got worse and you looked at it and you say it has gotten worse. Then you are out of faith. I'll close with Genesis 17. Long reading, I read from verse 1 to 22. I'm rounding up now. I'll be jumping verses. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham, said to him, I'm the almighty God. Walk before me, be thou perfect. I'll make my covenant between me and thee. I'll multiply you exceedingly. Abraham fell on his face. God talked with I remember it was one of my sisters I prayed for. She had a, an injury to the arm. I remember and I remember this testimony. She said, 
when I prayed for her, she felt a warmth by the arm and slept. So when she woke up, the arm had gotten worse. And I said, what did you do? So I told Sita, I said, you must be a bastard. Don't you have wisdom to change tactics? Is it the same tactics you are you not fed up? I said, come on, get out of there. So she continued doing what she was doing until date. That arm became perfectly healed. Perfect. But it felt it felt it first went worse. I remember clearly, you know. Let's go on. And Abraham fell on his face. God talked with him, saying, As for me, my covenant is with you. You shall be a father of many nations. Neither shall your name any more be Abraham but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. I'll make you exceeding fruitful. I'll make nations of you. Kings shall you are not the one going to God. God has now visited you. Say, it's time. It's time. God. Hmm. <coughs> God went further to establish a covenant between him and Abraham here. And I have to jump. So you could see God telling Abraham, you're going to have a child. Your name is no longer Abraham. It's not Abraham because I've made you a father of many nations. Fantastic. What would you do if it was you? God, not an angel. God appears to you. Not Michael, not Gabriel. God, Jesus. Sam Jesus, the son of Abraham. You. Ah, ah. Hey, you are too much, Lord. Hey, what did you say? Don't get too excited. So you hear what he has to say first. This time next year. That's Genesis 18. Let's go there. And the Lord appeared unto him. The Lord, not the angel, on the plains of Mary. He sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked and lo, three men. Ah, sorry, I have to jump. All right. Verse. Um, okay, verse 9. They said to Abraham, Where is Sarah your wife? He said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. Lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. Meaning, in a year's time from now, you're going to have a son. They're specific now. A year from now, you're going to have a son. Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind. Abraham and Sarah were old, well stricken in age. He ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of two women. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I'm waxed old, shall I have pleasure my Lord being old also? And the Lord heard it. You see? <laughs> the Lord said to Abraham, Where did Sarah laugh? Saying, Surely I have a shorty. I, surely I of a shorty shall bear a child with which I'm old. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I'll return unto you according to the time of life Sarah shall have a son. Sarah denied, lying. Saying, I, I didn't laugh. Oh. <laughs> but you know, what was her complaint? She didn't say she wouldn't have a son. What was her complaint? Pleasure. Pleasure. Right? You know why I like God? Don't ever quote this scripture that um, you, can, you can use one stone to kill a hundred birds. Do you know that? You know, normally you can't use one stone to kill a hundred birds. God uses one stone to kill a hundred birds. Pleasure. We will give you pleasure. <laughs> we know what to do. And the pleasure preparation is the bad guys and they're around. We know what to do. Don't worry. Genesis 20. <clears throat> in this oppression, it can get worse. But because we want to answer that prayer of pleasure, we allow it to get worse, then we get it better. Abraham journeyed from thence towards the south country, dwelt between Kadesh and Shaw, so John and Gera. And Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, sorry, uh, she's my sister, Abimelech, king of Gera, sent and took Sarah. God came to Abimelech in a dream by night, said to him, behold, you are but a dead man. For the woman which you have taken, she's a man's wife. You may not fully understand this. He's a king. He sees a lady. He wants to have her to himself. Abraham was in the case and said, oh, she's just my sister. I said, Let's help you now. Let's help you. Abby? <laughs> I was just carrying her from your father's place. When will she settle down? And the king bring her in. And Abraham said, my Sarah was looking and said, my Lord the King, may you enjoy yourself, have a nice time. Hey, that's the way David behaved when he was going with uh, King Akish, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> this general sometimes, you know, 
But to understand what transpired here, you know, the men of now, they meet a lady and they go to hotel. No, not the kings of those days. Let's go to the book of Esther. <laughs> Esther. Esther chapter 2. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, they've gotten rid of Vashti, the king's queen, and they need another woman. So, in verse 8, it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, many babies were gathered together unto Shushan, the palace, to the custody of Hegai, that Esther too was brought to the king's house, to the custody of Hegai, keeper of the women. And the maiden pleased him. She obtained kindness of him. He speedily gave her things for purification. We sought things as belonged to her. Seven maidens, which were meant to be given her out of the king's house, and he preferred her and her maidens to the best place of the house of women. Meaning, if the king has an idea that ah, that baby is not, you know, all the king does, he doesn't talk much. Oh. So, ah, that's his right hand man. That's the end. That's, I just dropped from the convoy. My lord, the king. I'm already. It seems to like he can do that kind of job. <laughs> he will deliver. Even the wife says he will deliver. <laughs> so, they get the babes. Now, the kings don't just start to No! See, they gave Esther seven women to attend to her for her purification so that she can come before the king. Let's continue. <clears throat> so they gave her seven maidens and a particular chamber. Verse 10. Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred, nor Mordi for Mordecai had changed her that she would not show it. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her. Verse 12. Now, when every maid's turn was come to go into the king of Israel, after that she had been what 12 months. So they just keep them in a chamber. 12 months. They spar. Oh, yeah, spa, um, um, fittings, nails, eh? Pedicure, manicure, all cure, head cure, nose cure, every cure, and what? Massage, ah, ha, you can't. So, he said, his pleasure, your problem is. So, by the time they finished, now they gave um, Abraham one year to have a son, and it's nine months for delivery. So, I don't think she's supposed to be there for at least six months. So three months, God said, if you pass three months, this will happen in one year. God just a better me like, say, you're a dead man. Say, eh? Say, they say, when you're one of your chambers. And then he said, you to restore the song. Kai, with gold and silver. By the time Sarah came out, they had not finished the purification. They had just treated the lines. You know lines? And the wrinkles. And the, uh, what's that in the call pocket? I remember I saw a lady once. I, I was seeing somebody once. And they are not they are not going to the office. So when they open the door, <laughs> I said, which one is this place is for pockets? Uh, is it eh? Mats. To remove mats. <laughs> so the one for mat, you can't see the king with Bokilo Jebe. They have put that one there. All those wrinkles. They have put the one that will straighten the body. Then they do mal toning. Are you getting it? Does it look too? Come on, mama, wabe under. No. <laughs> By the time she came out of that chamber, Abraham said, "Pleasure has arrived." God said, "We have dealt with both pleasure and Isaac, but it went worse first. Does that look? Do you think? Let me ask you. <laughs> this is what we're laughing. Do you think Abraham was laughing? How do you think he was outside that place? Eh? Hey. He will even try and ask the king's man how she's behaving herself. Have you taken her to the king's chamber? Oh, she has not gone yet. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but where, where is she going? Ah, that one is long. There's Q. Ah, very good. In fact, from where I see things, let us stay long there so that you will treat all the things that need to be treated. You get it? I know my sister. I know my sister. Very heady like this. Make sure she stays long. Don't say that to the king or he's protecting himself. He'll just be, you know. But as he's sleeping at night, the, you know what's the name of that? His servant. I went to look for his son. 
Elias said, Oga, sleep. He said, How can I sleep? Is your wife not with you? You just get out of there. <laughs> His beak must have risen small. Sorry, go and ask that guy. You know, the man respects me a lot. He likes you. Ask him, has Sarah gone? So God leave it. I said, go ask. Has Sarah entered the king's chamber? Or oh, she's still in the preparation room. I want to know. I want to. <laughs> Praise God. But it was in faith. And everything looks like it was falling apart. But I can tell you, one thing he kept saying, according to the time of life, Sarah will give birth to Isaac for me. They've taken his wife. How are you going to, how is she going to give birth? I don't know how it's going to be done. But one thing I know that the Lord said three months ago, she will give birth to Isaac. But the situation has gotten worse. Faith is not just resolve. It's more of resolve. Kai. That's the last day faith God is looking out for. You think that's... <laughs> this one we are laughing. <coughs> the only way I can explain it is collect Tommy from me. Where will I put her? <laughs> no, I can't use that as an example. My wife is looking at me. Don't use that. Don't do that again. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. It's not funny to any man. No. When you understand the religious nature of the women of those days. Do you think Sarah said, was having a nice time in that place? What is the meaning of this? She's not having a nice time at all. It went from bad to worse and from worse to best. Kai. But from bad to worse is not lack of faith. Did you hear me? From worse to worse is not lack of faith. And the last day of faith the Lord is looking out for, men who will carry such a resolve. So let it be ten times worse than this. This is how this case is still going to end. Jesus. And he got to the tomb of Lazarus. He said, Lord, if only, say, leave that one. What's wrong with you? If only you had been here. And it's not long, just four days. Jesus said, in a nutshell, nothing has changed from what we agreed. Nothing has changed. If only you had been here, things won't be this bad. We prayed. It appeared you were healed. And the amen seems to have returned worse than before. Oh, no. That doesn't mean you are not in faith. They're only waiting for your reaction. That's all. They're only what? For your reaction. That's look at him. I want to pray for you, for your faith. Abraham is a man that went through a lot of emotional torture because taking his son Isaac to go and sacrifice him, I know he had faith, but at one time he will ask me, ah, hey, it will be late to roll on my Ah, God. His wife in that chamber, after all, they tell him, stop trying to find out whether she's going to meet the king or not. Leave it. Didn't you trust God? Trust him. So I leave it to God. He told me Isaac would come by, um, that's, um, uh, another uh, 10 months from now, Isaac will come 10 months from now. Let it go worse than this. Isaac will come. And it's, Isaac is not coming to Abimelech. He's not the father of Isaac. I am the father of Isaac. And he's going to come. And nothing, not even Abimelech will stop it. And God said, I love your reaction. You are in faith. Now watch me step in. Kai. My prayer is that... Um, God will keep you in the faith. Amen. He will keep you steady. Amen. You will not falter. Amen. You will not give up. 
whatever agreement you have made with God, it will be made manifest. Amen. There shall be a performance of that which you have spoken into the ears of God in the name of Jesus. God will be glorified in your life. Jesus will be magnified in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I ask, when she came out of that chamber, you know, the Bible says Abraham's batteries were dead. You understand? I'm speaking in a parable, and I expect you to understand. His batteries were dead. <laughs> when Sarah came out of that chamber, you know when they say the job start battery? Oh, luau. <laughs> you know, I've been to a party, and I sat on the table, and I sat with somebody I see almost every day, and I didn't initially recognize this person. Has it happened to you before? Those make up things. Has it ever happened to you before? <laughs> that the person, after the person make up, you are now saying, uh, that is Rachel. Hey, good morning, madam. How are you? Have we met before? Say, so I was okay. Jesus. <laughs> it has not happened to you before. And so when she came out, say, who are these maidens? Who are these kings? Say, these kings, they won't kill us. So I said, eh? Sarah. I said it. I said it, I felt movement down there. What did the day? Oh yeah, Sarah, um, what is that, the servant? No visitor till tomorrow, eh? Abby? Uh, maybe I should come and take one of the preaching from me and help me out, eh? No visitor, no phone calls, Abby? Shut down data. By the time they showed up in the morning, Isaac appeared, right? You see the way you laugh? You're all going to laugh. Yeah. End of September, Jesus said in John 4, don't say you have four more months. Don't say you have four more months. He said, look up for I say to you, the field is what? Ripe already. So I will also say, don't say at what end of September, look what you're doing. I said, God knows. No, it's not going to. No, we're not going to wait till then. It's not going to. We're not going to wait till then. We're not going to wait till then. We will not wait till then. We will not wait till then. In the name of Jesus. Songs of Solomon says, we have a sister. Her neck is long and her boobs like towers. He said, but we have no man to ask for a hand in marriage. He said in Deuteronomy 24, he said, when a man, when a woman loses favor before the man, he said, let him divorce and give a certificate of divorce. Meaning, our sister is beautiful, but is lacking in favor. Let the oil of favor fall, can you, on every head that desires a life partner in the name of Jesus. They'll start looking for you. Why? You are MC, but sought out Beulah married. You, they will look for you. They will look. It's a glow. And it's, he said the kingdom of God is like a net which a man threw into the water and did what? Caught all manner of fish. The net is not looking for the fish. The fish are entering it. It's magnetic. It will draw men of requisite and required and the, the correct matching. Though, the Bible says when they brought the net to shore, they separated the bad. There were bad fish in it. So, that anointing will also draw the bad boys. Then it will give you wisdom to separate from the boys and the men. But they, to say that, a woman told me, say, in three years, I've not had a married proposal. Said, no, that's, that's not going to happen here. Did you hear me? That's not going to happen here. Say, in three years, one man didn't even say you are beautiful. I said, Kilo Day, Jesus. I said, say, the prayer you need is the senior pastor that will pray for you, not me. <clears throat> 
Thank you, Father. Once again, rise. Raise your right leg and just do like this and just say, I move forward. I move northward. Say, I move forward. I move northward. I move forward. And I move northward in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.